Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Eric, KJ4YZI. Video number two in this series about hand bands. We're doing one hand band at a time in this series to give you an idea on what you would expect as a real world scenario of me playing on these bands for a better part of 20 plus years. What you could expect to see, what times of day and year these bands would be active, how easy it is to make a dipole, and about the band privileges and get you an idea of what kind of radios maybe that you would want to get to get on these bands. Now I've done this series about seven or eight years ago. A lot of things have changed. We had some band plan modifications, um, different scenario doing the video and a lot more experience and also a lot new people have jumped into the hobby and I see it all the time in the comments. I'm new to ham, where to start? A lot of good comments on the video I did before this on 10 meters. So we're gonna follow up now with 12 meters and give you an idea. I love 12 meters. It's one of my favorite bands along with 10 and I'll tell you why. Let's jump on the computer real quick and look at the band plan, give you some ideas of what you'd expect on the bands and some suggestions as to how you can get on these bands. Okay, let's reference the World Radio League band plan chart here again. Before I do, a lot of the comments from the previous video and other videos I've done in the last two weeks have said they're wanting to get into ham radio. I'm making it more exciting for them. What's the easiest way? And I'll just tell you, ham radio prep, use the code ERIC20, save 20% on any course you buy. You can go technician and get your license or go right to extra. And ham radio prep makes it super easy with classes like this where they highlight the blue letters here, blue words, indicating those are part of test questions. And they explain it so that you know what the hell you're doing, not just memorizing answers. I mean, the concepts of radio waves here and antennas, it's all here on ham radio prep. Over here on the left, basic electrical concept, Ohm's law and calculating power intro to electrical components and so much more if you use the code eric20 at checkout at ham radio prep you'll save 20 percent. and guys you'll get ready to take your license within a week you can be a, a technician licensed operator in a week or less depending on how much you put into that so thank you to ham radio prep who are also the creators of world radio league for offering that code eric20 to save 20 percent. and if you want to get in that wrl like you'll see here in this video series World Radio League, use the code ERICWRL, save 20% is there as well. Now, back to here, 12 meters. Looking at here, you only have 100 kilohertz of band from one side to the other. That's 24.890 to 24.990. And notice you don't see any technician here because you must be a general class or higher to operate on 12 meters. Now, the band here is... Roughly half of this band here would be your CW, RIDI, and DATA, okay? A lot of FT8 there, as you'll see on my uh, FT8 and FT4 and stuff, as you'll see on my logbook here. Also, some RIDI and a lot of Morse code. The good thing about 12 meters is it's one of the WARC bands. World Amateur Radio Conference had designed or de the uh, designated three bands, 12, 17 and 30 as work bands. What does that mean? There's no contesting allowed. So if you if there's a contest weekend, you know that band like 10 meters, 20 meters, 40 meters gets entirely too crowded sometimes. And that's why you keep the radio off. I've heard it from many a people. But something like 12, 17 and 30, well, there is no contesting there. So a lot of rag chewing here. And what I could tell you is 12 meters operates like 10 meters. So when 10 meters opens up during the late spring, early summer, even in the winter, there's some, some active, uh, active sunspots and, and active uh, times of the winter months that 10 will open, 12 opens as well. So if 10 is wide open, jump up to 12 if you're authorized to transmit there and call CQ and you'll be surprised 12 meters has a lot of DX, okay? <clears throat> Down here in the CW digital portion, 24.915 is where your FT8 is for those FT head, FT8 heads out there. 24.915. 24.920 is where I used to hang out roughly for PSK31, but it's really hard to find anybody doing anything but FT8 on 12. I would love to have a lot of guys on here doing Hellschreiber or maybe uh, Olivia or Contestia. Some of those cool keyboard to keyboard real interactive chatting modes instead of FT8. I wish we could do more of that on 12 meters. And then up here, like I said, um, 12 meters, 930 to 990, that's your voice phone portion, okay? And a lot, like I said, from what I've seen over the years, 12 meters offers a lot of DX, 
uh, I don't ever hear anybody too much stateside. I always hear people in Europe, South America, New Zealand, a lot of places go, a lot of uh, places utilize 12 meters more than the U.S. That's my, that's my opinion and my opinion alone, okay? Or else we'd have, the, we, this thing would be crammed on 12 meters all the time. But it's always DX stations calling DX. Now, if I go over here to my logbook, on World Radio League, I have one for home here. And if I look in the log, you can see yesterday I was doing some FT8, just checking the band. That's what I use FT8 for to see where it's going, you know, where's my signal being heard. And then I end up making a couple of contacts, which are 6,000 plus kilometers away, as you can see here, Canada, um, England, Wales, okay, all on 12 meters. And then down here, Back in this, uh, October 21st, you can see I was here. These are 12 meters here all the way to here. I was I started on 10. You can see here. I was doing, look at all the DX flags here. I worked one guy. Actually, that day, I, it was all DX. And then one guy on 12 meters here, and the rest was DX. So you can see 8,000, 7,000, 9,000 kilometer regular contacts here on FT4. Uh, single sideband, FT8. I mean, here's one sideband guy I talked to here in Texas, 1,600 miles away. So there is activity on 12 meters. Let's look at the map here for a second. I changed my little my little globe here so, so I can you can customize it however you want. But you can see a lot of DX here into Europe. Not so much um, on this map here to Africa or, you know, Asia or Japan or Australia yet. But again, I've only been using World Radio League for the last couple months and, um, I've been busy. So I'm, you know, making contacts here or there, but I'm on the road every day driving on HF and I don't log those contacts. So I've talked a lot more than I'm logging. That's for sure. So what else about 12 meters? One more thing I want to tell you because... I didn't mention it in the last video, but 10, 12, 15, 17, and 20 do have beacons that you can hear to hear HF propagation. There are beacons on 10 meters right around 28.2-ish. I used to have a beacon coordinated frequency on 28.252.5, and since then I haven't run that. That was years ago. But on 12 meters, about 20, at you know, nine around there somewhere, nine... 899 something uh, you'll see there could be beacons there and a beacon of course you'll hear this automated CW or most Morse code transmission that is going at low power five watts or less and it goes uh, on a schedule and if you can receive that beacon you know that the band is open from where you are to that beacon wherever that beacon may be so 10 12 15 17 and 20 do offer beacons down in the CW portion and you want to utilize those take advantage of those um, like I said, nothing against H, uh, World Radio League or any other website out there, but you see this graph here? This tells you, oh, well, it suggests that it's good 30 and 20 meters, good day and night. But I can tell you I've been on 30 meters when it said absolutely poor, and I was on 10 meters all week. And look, it says poor all week. So this is solar terrestrial data with indexes that's suggested on what you can do. But remember, if you can hear beacons on 12 meters and you can hear people talking and it's it's open so you call cq and you may have a contact you never know where 12 meters is open it's like 10 12 meters could be open all the way across the planet but if nobody's using it we'll never know there's people there so back to the simple antenna dipole calculator if i type in 24.930 somewhere right in the middle between the data of the cw portion and the phone portion you will see in comparison to 10 meters, like I showed in the last video, the total antenna length is 18 feet, 9.2 inches. That's 9 feet, 4.7 inches each side, which is still not a lot of real estate for an antenna for 12 meters if you want to make a simple dipole. Just get yourself some, you know, spare speaker wire or something. You can even use old coax and use just the braid and make it like a bazooka and a bazooka dipole, they call it. And, uh, you know, cut it exactly 9 feet, 4.7 inches for each side with a one-to-one -one balance in the middle and get that thing horizontal like this. Or as an inverted V, come down like this, and you will have a 12-meter antenna if you just want to have something for 12. Now, if you want to make something for 10 and 12 for that President Washington that does both, you know what you can do? It's called a fan dipole. So you can make one here, you know, each side 9 feet, 4.7 inches, and then you do the same for 28, uh, you know, 500, 
and you make this calculation, 8 feet, 2.5 inches each side, and you tie both of those to the, the, the ballon here, so you'll have one side with two wires and one side with two wires. One set of wires is calculated for 10 meters, one set of wires is calculated for 12, and you tie them to the same part on this ballon and spread them out. Maybe do one like this, and then one down here, or one up here, and one down here. Make a fan dipole. And that'll, if you tune up, if you get on 10 meters and you start talking, you'll be resonant on 10. If you get on 12, you'll be resonant on 12 with the same antenna. It's going to resonate on the pair of wires that is cut for that frequency automatically. They call it a fan dipole. Your signal is going to broadcast and resonate on the set of wires you have attached to your ballon for that frequency. And you could do that with 20 and 40 as well if you want, or 10 and 40. So you can have a set of wires, 8 feet, 2.5 inches on each side. And then you could do one for 40, like this. You could do uh, 7.150, 32.73 on each side, and tie them both to the same point on the ballon where the wires go and space them out and you'll have a fan dipole for two bands off one coax and one ballon. Okay, so radios these days, multi-band HF radios like this 7300 behind me, most all the radios being manufactured today will do 12 meters, all the work bands, okay? But you go back 15, 20 years, 30 years, you might not have that used radio you picked up at HamFest might not do 12 meters. The good thing is the radios that are coming out now that are mainly from China, and I've made a video on every single one of these ones that I'm talking about. The links are in the description, and I talked about it at the end of the last video on 10 meters. Stuff like the President line of radios, President Washington, the uh, President Lincoln, the Radiotity QT40, QT60, QT80, those will do 10 and 12 meters with the additional mod for 11 meters, because you have 10 and 12, you mod the radio for 11 if you want to be on CB as well. Uh, the Anytone radios, quad 5, quad 6, a lot of them can be used on 10 and 12 meters. You're not going to find a single band 12 meter that easily. If they make one out there, drop a comment and tell me what it is because I don't think that they ever made a standalone 12 meter radio. But the idea is you get hooked on 10 meters and you get started as a tech and you jump into general. Having a radio like a 7300 or a, a 7100 like I have in my truck or even a President Washington or a Radiotity radio or any tone, you could start on 10 if you get your general, boom, you have another band there in the radio. Um, but typically you have your 10, 12 meter radios, then you have a radio that does it all. As far as antennas, the same thing. You can build your own dipole that will do 12 meters, cut just for 12 meters or you can use a multi-band wire antenna, like a off-center-fed dipole with a tuner or a uh, tracked vertical. I had a, a high-gain AV680 vertical, it did nine bands. Of course, one of those, it was 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, 40, 75, and 80. That was nine bands in that vertical. Each portion of that vertical had a separate tuning stub for that band. So all nine were resonant, okay? Um, if you use something like a simple G5 RV, it may or may not tune. I'm not really sure about the some of these multi panned wires that you put up and using a tuner. If if on 12 meters that antenna is an 18 to 1 SWR, you may have a tuner that'll clean it up and tell you your radio is one to one, but it's not going to be that efficient on 12. So if you're wanting to work all the work bands 12, 17, and 30, make sure on that multi band antenna you have that that covers it. For instance. I have a uh, Kushcraft out there that's a four band vertical and it does pretty good, but it only does 10, 15, 20, and 40. doesn't even include the work bands. So it doesn't mean just because it's an antenna that does multi band HF that it will work on 12, 17, and 30. Okay. But other than that, I hope you learned something on 12 and I hope that I hear you on 12 and see you on 12 and chat with you on 12. And um, if you like that laid back action where there's really no contesting or any kind of it's just mainly a really quiet rag chew band, but offers a lot of DX, as you saw. So take care. We're going to do another video in a couple days. We'll go to 15 meters. That's another one that's got a lot of DX. So we'll talk to you then. 7-3.